I'm here with UT Dallas head men's soccer coach Jason Hirsch talking about his 2020-2021 men's soccer season. Hirsch entering his eighth season with the Comets. Jason, thank you for joining us today. Of course. This has been a strange season for all the fall sports here at UT Dallas. Men's soccer is no different there with the fall season moved to a truncated spring season. But I still want to talk to you about a few of your student athletes that are coming back that you see making an impact uh, on the field this spring. You got 21 guys returning from the 2019 championship team. Um, three of those earned all conference honors, two of those all regions. So let's talk about the star at the top of the tree last year, the offensive player of the year in the conference. Talk about Jovi Munoz for this upcoming season. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Jovi's had two excellent seasons with us as a freshman and sophomore, um, transferred to us with four years of uh, soccer eligibility. So, you know, obviously delighted to get him when we did. Um, you know, like I said, had two great seasons, um, freshman, sophomore year, especially sophomore year, really stood out. Um, and, uh, you know, we're hoping that he can continue with that form, form into this spring. Uh, he had a good fall. And the, and the practices we were able to, to get through. Um, and he's looking pretty sharp so far this spring. So we're excited about what he can do here. Uh, this will be his last semester with us. So we're excited about, uh, um, you know, seeing him back in action uh, this spring. Jody was joined as an all-region pick returning as uh, goalkeeper John Nicknish. Uh, Nicknish, uh, full-time starter now for you. Uh, overcome some injuries early in his career. Talk about John Nicknish and your expectations in goal for him this spring. Yeah, John's, um, you know, he's had some injury issues and some ups and downs, but, you know, he's a fantastic goalkeeper. And, uh, you know, we have a lot of confidence in him. I know his teammates have a lot of confidence in him. Uh, you know, he's training really well. And, um, you know, I think we all look back at, at in the goal and, you uh, you know, feel some comfort that that he's back there. He's got a lot of experience. You know, he's played in some some pretty big, meaningful games as a freshman, sophomore, and junior. He's a senior now. He, you know, this will be his last semester with us as well. So, um, you know, we're excited to have him back for another another season, and and uh, you know, hope he plays some of his best soccer. John had some serious talent on the back line last year, which you lost, unfortunately, in the 2019 season. But Brandon Bond does return. He was an all-conference defender for you. Um, he's going to be called upon to lead that defensive back line to give John Nicknish all the support he can. Talk about Brandon Bond and what you're going to see, hopefully, from him in his, his season this spring. Yeah, but Brandon is uh, you know, really talented, exceptional player. You know, I love him. I, I love everything about him. He's a, he's a great player, great athlete, you know, very technical, you know, but really it's it's some of those other intangible things. It's it's his attitude. It's his competitive nature, um, you know, his mentality, even towards, you know, training sessions and practice. You know, he's an animal out there and he, and he strives to win in everything he does. So, you know, like you said, it's important to have uh, an experienced upperclassman um, back there who can show some of the young guys, you know, how we do it and how it's done and, um, you know, brings the right attitude into every single practice, um, match, everything that we do, you know, he, he's got the right attitude. So, um, you know, definitely looking to him to have a good spring um, and, um, you know, be a leader out there for our team. As I mentioned earlier, you do have 21 players returning from the squad who won the conference title back in 2019. Um, so there's a lot of talent that you brought back. There's a lot of experience you brought back. Uh, you can field a pretty solid squad. Across the country, the approaches toward the spring season is different, depending on who you ask in Division Three, Some schools are using it as a training session to get ready for the fall of 2021. Are you approaching it as a training season, or are you still approaching this as a championship season since there's a conference title on the line? Yeah, I, I think it'd be a disservice to the players if we if we didn't approach it, um, you know, with the right attitude, which is there's someone's going to win a championship, you know, someone's going to someone's going to get a trophy and win a championship this year. And so, you know, I want that to be us. So, yeah, of course, we're going after it, uh, you know, just like any other season where, you know, there's a there's a title on the line. We want to win it. So, 
Um, definitely not approaching it as it, as if it's just a, a training season. Um, you know, I think the players really want this. They want to compete. They want to play meaningful matches, and that's what this is to us. So we're going to approach it in that way and, um, you know, play the best team we have available week in and week out and, um, you know, try to win another championship. With the shortened conference-only schedule, you go from uh, normally playing two games a week during the fall. Now you're playing one game a week during this spring shortened season through February and March. How does that adjust your bench, using your bench deeper? Will you see more of the bench play? Will you not see as much bench play because you don't need to rest players for a two-game week? Yeah, that's a good question. And, um, you know, I've got some ideas on how we want to approach, approach the games. Um, at the end of the day you know, uh, we just want to win. <laughs> so whatever that takes. I mean, if I've got to keep, um, you know, a group of uh, reliable starters on the field, you know, a little bit more, get, get give them a few minutes more per match than we normally would in a two game weekend, then we will. Um, but I'll tell you this, we got some really good young players. And, um, you know, I, if they if they're good enough to play, they're going to play. So whatever it takes for us to win games, that's what we're going to do. We got a good squad. We got a deep squad. We got competition for places. So, you know, yeah, we got, you know, a, a good amount of returning players, but we also brought in a, a good amount of good young freshmen that we're excited about. And even some of these sophomores that maybe didn't see a ton of minutes last year um, are looking really sharp in practice and, and, you know, they'll get some opportunities. So, you know, at the end of the day, whatever, you know, game to game, whatever it takes to win. Some games we may rotate more, some games we may rotate less. You know, that'll be uh, up to me and my coaching staff to decide. But at the end of the day, we just want to win. And I think, you know, the players feel the same way. So you learned last summer that uh, you would not be playing in the fall. There wouldn't be uh, any competition. There wouldn't be a national tournament this year. How have you and your coaching staff and maybe even your upperclassmen motivated um, your team during the fall semester, through the winter break, into the spring. What have you done to motivate them to get ready for February soccer? Well, I mean, you know, I, with this group of players, I really don't have to do a lot of motivating. You know, we set up the practice sessions, um, you know, to be competitive. We want to do some kind of competition in every session. Um, you know, seeing as we're not preparing for games week in and week out um, at the moment, we're, we're, we're training with a purpose to get prepared individually and then collectively for our first game. Um, but I don't need to do a lot of motivating. You know, we, we set up uh, the sessions and they go out there and they play and they play hard. I mean, this, this group trains well. They, they go out there and they work hard and I, I don't have to jump onto them about anything. They, they've got it you know, within themselves. And, and, you know, we always talk about returning players, setting the standard, learning from the guys before you set a standard and then maintain that standard. Um, and I think our upperclassmen have done an excellent job with that so far, um, setting a standard, making sure that standard is held. So, um, you know, the, the practice sessions are a lot of fun, to be honest with you. They're, <laughs> they're, th these, this group can play and, um, and they compete and they all want to win. And, um, you know, that's all we can ask. So, you know, I like what we see out there in practice. You know, it, it's different when you go play the game. So we're going to have to get ready and prepared for that. But, you know, um, this group's self-motivated. I'm not, I'm not having to get on to them or do much to them. They, they, they do that on their own. Comets return to the pitch on February 13th with a road trip at Laterna, opening a short and conference-only season. Three home games in the spring for the Comets before a two-week ASC tournament. Coach Hirsch, thank you for joining us today. Best of luck this spring. Thank you.